Well, let's get straight into it before he pushes another button and takes himself off air. <laughs> uh, you're early, you're early, mate. <laughs> uh, Winston, Pete, it's good to have you have you join us. Um, and I and a number of people have mentioned you to me. What is it about being the MP for Tauranga that always attracts such controversy? And, and how, let's start with on a personal level. Um, <laughs> here's you in the twilight of your career. And Sam Uffendorf doesn't look like it's even going get, to get started, does it? It must be, be tough on him. Well, you know, as they say, live here without sin, throw the first stone. Yeah. This was a, he was a 16-year-old. Now, the question about later events, I know nothing about, and we'll find out whether there's a, there are facts. And let's see the facts before we have trial by media. But the chance of that happening are zero, aren't they? So yeah. here's the point. Uh, if you're going to say that you're going to attack a 14-year-old or 15-year-old or 16-year-old for behaviour all this time later, then uh, basically um, rehabilitation and other educational educational advancements are of no value to you if you, if you take that judgment. So let's be honest about it. Um, it, was, it was 16 years of age. And let's also understand and remember how bullying, particularly boarding schools used to be mm. back in those days. They were notorious for it. It was sort of not acceptable at all, but it still happened. Mm. Now, he disclosed this at his selection process, Winston, which I think was the decent thing to do, that he'd been, well, let go from King's College. Um, and obviously he, is, he had told Peters and, uh, people in the party about, you know, this misstep at the age of 16. I don't think he'd probably told them about yelling at the flatmate, but that hardly seems a hanging offence. Do you think Sam Uffendale's level of disclosure was adequate for someone seeking to enter public life? Well, um, I can't because I wasn't there at the time and wasn't part of the panel, but I thought he'd disclosed it sufficiently enough that Luxton's office was told, but they didn't pass the message on to him. Mm. That happened to be a fact. Mm. Also, the Labour Party knew, the Labour Party candidate knew because a text was sent to her at that time for him to ask that, for her to ask that question. Mm. You've got somebody who seriously knew, Andrew Kettles, in the ACT Party, who knew because he was at school at the same time. Mm. And then on top of that, you've got Simon Power, who heads the board of um, King's College, and many stints that uh, Sam did on the way through was with Westpac, then Simon was heading it. So there's a funny sort of narrative going on here where everybody's being judgmental. I'd like to know the facts before I say much more. Mm. And I guess, Winston, it would be naive and silly of us to think that everyone who stands for Parliament has lived a life of blameless excellence. <laughs> well, now, let me tell you that that's uh, how, on your on your part, being a media person, if I might say so, in inverted commas, slightly naive, because you know that most of those people that arrive in Parliament after they get MP behind their name think they're God. Mm. It's it's a strong transformation that happens. Mm. Considering that you know you're uh, to use the famous uh, the famous uh, warning to the Caesars every time they, a new Caesar came along, someone was appointed to run in front of his chariot. And every hundred yards, hey, remember, you're only a man. That's remember, right, yeah. you're only a man. It doesn't happen. People get an unfaded view of themselves. Yeah. Um, well, Sam, uh, uh, Sam Uffendall's had no time to pump himself up. In real terms, has he gone, Berger? You don't come back from this this early in your political career, do you? Well, the question is, there is an investigation being conducted by a QC. Uh, whether they get home with the facts, I don't know, but I'd like to know what is the truth. Mm. Because if it's purely upon his behaviour as a 16-year-old, then we are going to have very few people will put their name hand up for public life. Look, mm. I've seen gang members who have been utterly reformed, transformed their lives, gone from being real warriors and criminals in the society to being community leaders. And when you think of that, you've got to open, leave that opportunity open, otherwise we're going nowhere as a society. Mm. Well, the other thing too, Winston, is... 
do you think that Luxon has stood by his man enough? I think when there's an ongoing investigation, when you've been up front, when you deny another allegation, I think you should be left in your job. You should be treated as innocent until proven guilty, shouldn't you? I mean, in some ways, I get the feeling Luxon, uh, in pursuit of the swinging woman voter, has had no hesitation in throwing up and under the bus. I think you can legitimately say that because really, uh, innocent until proven guilty, well, look, mate, I've just gone through <laughs> uh, two years with respect to the SFO and yeah. everybody in the media said I was guilty even though I wasn't even called as a witness. Yeah, We won it, but it cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars. So innocent before being proven guilty is a magnificent uh, view and a ma magnificent philosophy, mm. but it's not been applied in my country or our country for some time, and sadly is the case. In Uffendall's case, he's entitled to a proper hearing. Do you think he should have been suspended from caucus, or does that in itself basically mortally wound his political career? Look, I saw a guy lose his ministry on the allegations that were utterly false. His name was Dobert Samuels. Yeah. It was very... I went to, I went to see him that night because I thought, this is disgusting. And when it was all over, even though Helen Clark said well, she, he couldn't stay because all these rumours were swirling around, she acted on the rumours and it wasn't true. And that's an awful thing to happen. Let's and be honest, she recall, just did not like Dover Samuels. We yeah, but I, can recall, I can recall David Parker, his former business partner, making an allegation... And David was a gone burger. Mm. Now, one guy in Parliament backed him, I did. And mm. I was, of course, I was in the other side of the, the house, but I thought this was so wrong. And guess what? David only got out of that because the company's office, which usually destroys the documents after seven years, hadn't after nine years destroyed it, and David found the document that exonerated mm. him. But I never saw anyone say to David Parker, we're sorry for maligning you falsely. Yeah, yeah. Which brings me back to Luxon. And I don't see leadership from him here, uh, Winston. I see him knee-jerking to a manipulative mainstream news media. I see him buying the woke narrative and not standing by his most junior MP in times of trouble for that junior MP. Well, that's your view and you're entitled to it. But I think what he's not standing by is the proper process by which these matters are handled. You've got to be staunch, you've got to have a bit of courage, you've got to uh, realise you're the leader and mm. show some leadership. And, and no matter what the howling masses might say, it's the process, fairness, honesty, uh, and a, a, a proper investigation with the facts out there before you rush to judgment. Yeah. Otherwise, we can stampede so many people out of a job and, and it's happened in the past and it's not right. Yeah. Kirsty Johnson, who wrote this story, Winston, says she had it, or she confirmed to her source, the day after the by-election. Yet the story breaks around the time of a new political poll which shows some change in fortune or a continuing trend against the government. Um, and, and I don't think... And there's another poll out today which shows a dead heat between the major parties. But the one trend consistent over these two polls is that major party support as the election approaches is dropping and people are more willing to explore their party vote options with secondary or tertiary parties. That has got to be good news for New Zealand First at this stage of the game. Well, talking about the exposure of this issue, isn't it funny, after the National Party's successful conference and as the two polling teams are in the field, this leak comes. Now, frankly, there is a place where this leak came from. Have a look at who's boasted Barnett's from it. It wasn't Labor. It most certainly wasn't National. But I'll leave it to you to work out the, com the combination of uh, personalities who were all in the place at the same time, namely at King's College, and then go to the political connection and it's all there. Now, a smart guy like you would find that answer very, no, very good. No, no, I'm struggling. You've got to lay it out for me. Who do you think was behind the timing of this story then? No, I'm not going to have you sue for defamation or me sue for defamation. No, I'm not going to. Right. No, no, it's, we're just shooting the breeze here. No one's listening, honestly. Oh, yes, look, they'll be listening now. No, make no bones about it because I'm saying to you that the link between that leak, go and see who is advantaged. Go and see the, the unusual timing. It's straight out of the National Party Conference, but as these two critical teams are in the field, uh, mm. you know, in the, in, in the polling field, this is leaked to try and get in front of the polls. 
it's got the stamp of two But I didn't think it was leaked. Over. Winston, it wasn't leaked. The information I've seen is Christy Johnson, one of the most appalling Me Too harridans of New Zealand journalism, was chasing this story by in the by-election. She finally got the source, that is the person who was beaten at King's College, um, she gets that person to go on the record the day after the by-election, the day after Uffendall's won. So the story has been sitting there in Stuff's editorial sort of computers since the by-election. So yes, because I was, they're, yeah, because they're, because Stuff would be paranoid about the legal consequences, and you're telling me they've put it through a defamation lawyer for the last three weeks. Okay. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, what I'm saying is that they, Christy Johnson has said online she had the story confirmed the day after the by-election. They'd been chasing it throughout the by-election. They got the person to go on the record and I presume swear an affidavit, the victim to swear the affidavit, they, but then they didn't drop the story until the last few days, which seems to me to be a rather strange decision to have made. Yeah, but look, here's, look at the other facts, though. Jan Tanetti, the, the Labour Party minister and candidate for Tauron at the time, mm -hmm. was sent this information, and yeah. that's a fact. Yeah. That's out there. Yeah, and the there's thing, a difference but, between being, but, being but, made no, aware on, of an allegation and then having enough proof to publish it as a journalist, Winston. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, in <laughs> my, in it, my yeah. experience, you know. No, no. Well, in my experience, no. Mm. My experience is they write any sort of crap if they think it'll stick. And, mm. and, and, and in the other case is, is this. The Luxton is a different name, of course. He's the Labour, he's the Act Party candidate no, I, down there in Hong and he's put out a four-page press release about how bad this all was. Yeah. And my response him is, but your party knew about this at yeah. the very time we were talking about it. So what you were saying this is an Act Party dirty dealing, that it was all Act no, 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 no. I've just told you of two political parties that knew about this. Didn't I? Yeah, yeah. I didn't say one party, I said two. Mm. And words matter. Mm. Um, what advice would you have as a sage veteran of politics in New Zealand? What advice can you give a young whippersnapper like Sam Uffendall right now who had to endure being driven back to Tauranga last night by Tr Todd Muller, I understand? Oh, look, uh, politics is a tough game. And either you believe in yourself uh, and sometimes it's a very, very lonely game. Mm. Either you believe yourself or you don't. This is his first possibly big challenge. I don't know about the rest of his life, but in this context, this is his first big challenge. I don't know whether he's guilty or innocent, but I'd like to know one thing, that in this country, in 2022, we still give people a fair go before yeah. we convict them. Not one of these things we'll, we'll have a, we'll hang them in the morning, but we'll have a trial first. Let's not have this anymore because it's so bad for this country. All right. And also... Not this veteran stuff, Herbo. You only, at the moment, you know there's a guy, 91 years of age, he's the head of one of the greatest funds in the, in the world, you know, um, Hathaway's. Uh, yeah. You know about his name, don't you? Yeah, okay, so uh, you're arguing you that I shouldn't be calling you a veteran. I use the term lovingly, Winston, honestly. It's a term of respect and endearment. Uh, don't, <laughs> you shouldn't be so sensitive, honestly. Hey, so you're, no, at, you're at 3%. Um, you're back in striking uh, distance, uh, clearly ACT doing really well as well. And I find that interesting because many would say they are going to be, you and ACT are going to be fighting for the same space uh, come the election next year. Do you see them increasingly as the foil that you're going to bounce off the ACT party? Look, I can only speak for this fact that uh, we are far higher in the public support than those polls say. When pollsters tell you, now listen to me, when the pollsters tell you, and I've got a political science degree and I've been in politics a long time, I know a little bit about mm. it. When, you have, when pollsters tell you that the unknown is 8%, yep. forget it. This far from election, anyone who says that is not a serious pollster. Now they'll argue and carry on. And the other terrible phenomenon we've got in this country is the gaps between our polls are huge. Offshore and leading democracies, if there's a gap of 2 3 percent between, the, between the polls, they get together and try and sort out their methodology. Here there have been gaps of 12% and they just arrogantly come, on, come along and keep putting their polls out. And that's what's been very misleading for New Zealand. Now the other thing I want to say is 
we haven't started yet. We're mm. beginning on the 1st of August on our first big meeting out in the countryside. Yep. And we'll be on our way. Yeah, that's uh, Walkworth, isn't it? Yes. Okay, and I might try and get to that speech. Winston, thank you. Sorry we came to you early. Entirely our <laughs> fault. Um, no, that's quite all right. I rushed off to make a cup of coffee, and then I, then right. I got this call to be there or be square. All right. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Always good talking to you. That is Winston Peters, the leader of New Zealand First. Oh, getting all antsy about being called a veteran. Well, you're not exactly a greenhorn, are you, Winston? You're not a whippersnapper anymore, like poor old Sam.